So I'm Cage Taylor from The Nocturnal. I'm here with Felita Lloyd, Claire Dunn, and Harriet Walter of Amazon Studios Film, Herself. Herself centers on a survivor of domestic violence who is determined to build herself a new home from scratch after public services and a possessive ex fail her and her two daughters. The protagonist, Sandra, epitomizes resilience, much like the characters in director Lloyd's past films, Mamma Mia and The Iron Lady. You have a history of directing films about strong women and portraying strong women. So what was it like directing this film? How was it different from your past films? And, you know, how was it similar? Okay. Um, so it's, yeah, the first really low budget movie I've done. I'd wanted to, it sounds crazy, but get to working in the low budget indie world, which um, most people kind of going in the other direction, trying to get bigger and bigger budgets. But I felt somehow this would be more in my zone. Um, and I, because I work in the theater and Claire and I and Harriet Walter, who plays Peggy, who gives the central character the house, we were all working together in an all female theater collective and very much kind of preoccupied by, we were working with women in the criminal justice system, women in jail. And we just met so many women whose roots into that had come against a background of domestic violence. And we were very like all of us, like we want to make these women's voices heard. Um, so it was very much a mission. Um, and then Claire had um, a friend who became homeless, lost her house, couldn't find any rental accommodation. And Claire was just like, oh my God, I'm going to sit down and I am going to just imagine myself, imagine this friend's future. And I'm going to just draw whatever it is. And the project was so kind of close to her heart. She knew this woman really well. Her mother, Claire's mother is a cleaner. Um, the whole thing was so in her. And I just felt I am going to, and also Claire wasn't even thinking about playing the lead at first. She was going to play a small role. And then one day somebody said, look, you know, Claire's written an incredible movie role here for a great leading star. And I was like, yeah, her, her, not not someone else, her. And that's what kind of, I was involved with another project, but I kind of went, been that, I'm moving, I'm going to come and help Claire. Um, you know, I wanted the world to see her and I felt like she had such an important message um, to share, not just with those of us who could perhaps help and come together in a community to help somebody suffering in this way, but actually she was speaking kind of directly to women themselves and saying, no, we, you may have got this more than you think you have. Um, she wanted to give a message of hope to people to say, maybe if you take this step, knowing it is this most dangerous step over the threshold when many women die, um, that if you make that step, maybe there are people out there who might help you so it was different to a lot of movies I'd seen about domestic abuse where perhaps it was so bleak that actually it wasn't really offering a kind of any kind of sense of possibility to somebody in this situation. But Claire, was, Claire knew who she was talking to. And especially in this time of pandemic, we felt like, oh my God, you know, we made this film before the pandemic broke, but we now feel like, more and more people are trapped in this situation. It's, an, it's very ideal for abusers to be able to operate without, with impunity. And we feel like we wanna get this message through the metaphorically, the letterbox, but it will hopefully come on to, into people's homes and, and give them some kind of inspiration. And covering different social issues and things like that, have you ever felt pushback, um, you know, going about that? Or has it been, you know, easy for you to be able to do that? To, to do, to tell stories that have got a social mission? Yes. I think that the, 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 what's exciting about this is it's paid for, that the film is financed a a, mainly by public money. In other words, BBC, you know, and in Ireland. And those public bodies are actually being run by incredible women um, who are looking for stories 
that have not been told. And a lot of stories, as we know, about women have not been heard. Um, and about, you know, a, a, a random diverse community coming together to make something happen. So there's a lot of sympathy um, for, you know, and of course they want a good script. It's not just, oh, it's a social mission, let's get it on the screen. They want a cracking good story, which is what we were trying to, you know, trying to create something that is gripping, that has an element also of sort of thriller. It's like, is she gonna be able to pull this off? Is she going to be able to build the house? Or is the, the abusive ex-partner, is he somehow coming for her? It had a kind of undertow of, of tension about it. And, and also a lot of humor and yeah, it was kind of somehow she, Claire was, was sort of trying to break the mold maybe of some, some films that have occupied this territory before. I'm joined by actresses Harriet Walter, and Claire Dunn, who plays the lead as well as wrote the film. Your film covers um, domestic violence, right? And which has been, you know, it hasn't been covered that much, but it's on the rise during the pandemic. So what was it like covering uh, this topic and being able to kind of, you know, uncover what hasn't been spoken about? Um, it was quite an education. Basically, one of the first things that ever happened to me was I asked a woman in a women's aid charity shop, and that's women's aid is a refuge for women in situations like this. And I told her that I was going to write a film about it. And the first thing she did was grab me by the arms and say, will you please write a story about all of us that get out the other side of it? Because we're not all just victims forever. And I could tell that she was a woman that had been through it. And I was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like... That's all we want to see just for once, because I think there's almost like an archetype of the battered woman. And um, that's in loads of stories that we've seen a million times. But have we ever seen that woman go beyond that in her journey and what happened to her next? And so it was my obsession to stand up for that woman in that charity shop. And OK, I'm going to tell that story, but also not do it in the tone of being a victim. Um, because I think they're actually soldiers on a front line when they're in those homes or in those situations. They're brave when they stay and they're brave when they go. And so for both of you, what was your favorite part about uh, your characters? Harriet? <laughs> favorite part about my character? Um, I like the fact that she... Um, that she has a consistency about her a, a philosophy, I think, which is that um, I think she's a sort of without even knowing it, she's a feminist. You know, she just realizes that um, she's connected with this woman who's of a di different. You know, she cleans her house. You know, and her mother cleaned her house, but she allowed her mother to break through that ser serving role, serving boss role, and be a real friend. And I think women, I may be generalizing here, but I think women are less class conscious. I think they're more able to unite across the classes and see what they have in common. And um, that's what I like about her, that she um, she's a uniter and not a divider. And she she's opened up by the situation. She herself grows um, through this adventure. Cool. And I'd say what I like most about Sandra is her ability to retain this really special, playful universe for her and her two kids, even within the unhappy home, and then wanting to expand that for the rest of their life. But I just love her bond with her kids. I think it's what keeps her going, even when she's broken. And I love that she listens to them. And I love that like, like I know actually Harriet's character points that out, but I think it is one of the best qualities about her because it's 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 hard to always be present as a parent. And I feel like she at least tries. She's not always brilliant and she does freak out and gets angry, throws a strop the odd time because of everything she's going through. But I think she does, at the, at, despite it all, she's trying to do the best for her kids. So I like that about her. And I also just like that... Um, she just gets on with things. She just gets on with things even when she's in bits. I admire that about her because I personally would moan about that, but she doesn't. <laughs> so you both play such 
strong women, um, but you know, they're also able to show their humanity. So were there any little mm-hmm. perks that you kind of added to make sure that, you know, the audiences knew that, you know, they're not superhuman, you know, they're real, uh, real women? Yeah, I think like for Sandra, it's her crying and grief over Gary. Um, and showing that it's not as simple as like, oh, he's bad now, I left him, thank God it's over. You love people, it's hard to let go of people, especially when they're not actually dead, to be honest. It's like, oh my God, like breakups are the hardest thing, but also in that situation, she's grieving somebody that she feels like became something else and she, she misses who they used to be. And then I'd say, God, like Peggy's humanity, let's start with, her injury let's start with when she falls in the bathroom I don't know hurry it I pass it over <laughs> no I think I think it's quite it's quite clear what um Peggy's weaknesses are from, from not just her physical frailty but she also the fact that she doesn't really like being helped you know she resents mm. the situation that she's dependent on somebody and um but she has been in, in the past we, we sense that there's a history of 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 Sandra's mother helping her out when she was in bad times. She doesn't really like being the person who's failed. She prefers to be the person who helps. And that's true of a lot of women, isn't it? They, they, they think of themselves as helpers and they don't like to show that they need help. And I think, um, well, it's true of lots of people, but um, I like the fact that that's broken through and she comes out the other side. <laughs> 